So let's take a look at the feedback mechanisms that help keep the body within homeostatic conditions. And the one that is the most common in the body is called a negative feedback mechanism. And you'll better understand in a moment why we refer to it as a negative feedback mechanism. Notice that I have redrawn the flow chart that I illustrated to you on a previous presentation, uh, a flow chart that represents the homeostatic control mechanism. And an example of a homeostatic control mechanism would be a negative feedback mechanism. So what I have here is a flat line um, or basically a beam balancing on a pointy structure representing the body in homeostasis when it comes to body temperature. So our average body temperature, as you know, tends to be around 37 degrees. But let's say that we're in a room for a while in a tank top and the air conditioning is blasting. Clearly, as the temperature around us is cool or cold, our body temperature is going to start dropping as well and the receptors are going to therefore detect the drop in the temperature. That signal, that change in the environment is the stimulus that is then going to be passed on as a signal into our brain. Particularly, there's a part in the brain that is called the hypothalamus, or for now, if you remember, it's the brain, that's good enough. And the hypothalamus will ultimately then send signals electrical signals to our skeletal muscles to start contracting very rapidly and we call that shivering. When we shiver, as our muscles contract very rapidly, we produce heat and so slowly but surely our body temperature comes back up. So if we illustrate this here, what we found happening is that our body temperature began to drop and consequently we're out of balance. What happens in a negative feedback mechanism is that our body succeeds in returning to homeostatic conditions. So right here we see how the stimulus is literally counteracted by the red arrow uh, by the negative feedback mechanism. So when there is a drop in the body temperature, we see that the response is that there is a rise in the body temperature. So we see that the response is in the opposite direction as the initial stimulus. Now we can also see or take a look at an, uh, totally the opposite um, example as in let's say we're in a hot room and therefore our body temperature begins to rise, we're going to again see that via the afferent pathway, the hypothalamus, um, or the parts of the brain, not per se the hypothalamus, but parts of the brain are going to respond. And this time we're not going to shiver, of course, but we're going to see that our sweat glands are going to be stimulated and so that we sweat. And when we sweat, Sweat functions sort of like your evaporative cooler in your house, as in sweat will evaporate from your body, and as it does that, it takes away the heat from your body. And so consequently, we're bringing down our body temperature. So notice again, over here the body was, temperature was rising, down here the body temperature is dropping. So in this last example, we noticed that our, um, body temperature was rising and yet the feedback mechanism which we call the negative feedback mechanism succeeded in bringing the body temperature back to homeostatic conditions of about 37 degrees Celsius. So in a negative feedback mechanism we see that the response counteracts the initial stimulus. That's why we call it a negative feedback mechanism and most of the time homeostasis is maintained like this in the body and there are many examples. We could be looking at changes in calcium levels in the blood 
We could be looking at changes in glucose levels in the blood. We could be looking at changes in your heart rate and your blood pressure. The list goes on and on and on. You're going to see many, many, many of those examples throughout this semester and in your future classes.